funding for the Islip Arts Council's historic homes and houses of worship is made possible by the generous support of the Robert David Lyon Gardner Foundation. Hello, my name is Frank Giebfried. I'm a docent here at the Meadowcroft Estate. The Meadowcroft Estate has been on the National Registry since 1987. It is the summer home of John Ellis Roosevelt and his family. John Ellis Roosevelt was familiar with the Sable area because his father established his estate north of here. By 1910, the Roosevelts had over 215 acres on their compound. Robert Barnwell Roosevelt's brother was Theodore Roosevelt Sr. The family was so close that President Theodore Roosevelt visited the Meadowcroft estate in July of 1903. The story that was reported in the paper was that after a thunderstorm, President Roosevelt, his son, and two of his nephews left Sagamore Hill at about 1 a.m. And it's here that Teddy probably had lunch with his cousin and family. One of the stories that was also reported is that the Secret Service did not know where the president was. He just left, which is very typical of Teddy Roosevelt. Certain authors have reported that Teddy felt like that was kind of babysitting. And if you remember, President Roosevelt's predecessor, President McKinley, was assassinated. As you enter the grounds of Meadowcroft, you drive down a dirt road. The original entranceway would have had white willows hanging over the road. So you'd have been driving through a tunnel. When you got to the fork in the road, the Meadowcroft estate would have appeared. If you took the drive to the east, that was for the guests. So Teddy Roosevelt would have taken that one. The servants and service driveway was to the west. The house itself is a combination of two types of architecture. It is colonial revival and it is also Queen Anne. To the rear is the original farmhouse. When the Roosevelts purchased the property, they did not knock down the farmhouse. What they did is they put this addition on that we see here. The house kind of laid dormant for quite a while. However, there is a story that Jean, the youngest daughter, was actually born here, would come here every year for her birthday and have a picnic with her family. In 1974, Suffolk County bought the property from Jean Roosevelt. Then our organization, the Bayport Blue Point Heritage Association, worked with the county to restore the property and turn it into the museum. Well, that concludes our introduction to Meadowcroft. Now let's go inside and enjoy some music from Yo Cheng Ma and Eleanor Zayas. Hello, my name is Eleanor Zayas, and I'm very happy to be here at Meadowcroft today to perform with Yo Cheng Ma and play some music in this beautiful, beautiful space. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the piano that I'll be playing on today. This was an original piano to the Roosevelt family. It is a Horace Waters, and it's just a beautiful case, and we're taking very good care of it today. I'm very happy to be playing on it. I'm Yu Cheng Ma, the executive director of the Children's Orchestra Society, which was founded by my father. And under his direction, grandchildren of the Roosevelts were members of his orchestra. So it's a real coincidence and it's just full circle to be coming here and I'm very excited to be here.
As we step into the house, we enter the Great Hall. When the house was restored, our founders had John Ellis Roosevelt's ledger. We know what furniture was in each room of the house when he bought it in 1891. The downstairs of the house is furnished with, with period correct furniture or original furniture that was donated back by the Roosevelt family. We have several photographs that show what the house looked like in the 1890s. To my left is an ingle nook. This room would have functioned as kind of a living room for the family. If you imagine them waking up in the morning and coming down here, they would have made their plans for the day. To my right is the dining room. This would have been the room that President Roosevelt would have had lunch in back in 1903. The table and chairs in the room are original. Welcome to the ladies parlor. We have a grand fireplace with the original mantle. Some of the furniture is original to the actual house. What you see behind me here is the original Roosevelt piano. It was made by Horace Waters. The family purchased the piano in 1898. We also have a lemonade cart, which is also original to the family. If the Roosevelts walked in here, they would have said, oh, it's the ladies parlor. I'm comfortable here. That concludes our brief tour of the first floor of Meadowcroft. Now let's go listen to some more music from Yo Cheng Ma and Eleanor Zayas. Welcome to the second floor. We're currently in the Roosevelt's master bedroom. In July of 1891, Eugenia, known as Jean, was born to the family, probably in this room. Right next door was Jean's nursery. This wallpaper is a reproduction of what could have been here. It's from the late 1800s. The light that you see next to me here is a kerosene light that's hanging from the ceiling. Other lighting in the room that uh, has been restored are two wall fixtures. The house was originally lit with gas. Most houses that had gas at the time were lit by acetylene. However, this house was powered by Turrell's gas equalizing machine, which used actual gasoline to light the house. This bathroom we're leaving unrestored because we want visitors to see what the house looked like before it was restored by our organization. This room right off the master bedroom was Jean's nursery. It currently houses our library. Across the hall from her parents was Pansy's room. Pansy had a debutante ball at the age of 16, like most wealthy young women would have at the time. 
Uh, just a few years later, however, an article appeared in one of the New York papers saying that Anita Pansy Roosevelt has retired from society due to nervous prostration. It meant she had some type of mental illness. She stayed at institutions in Flushing and upstate New York, and unfortunately she passed away in 1929. After Pansy, we know that Gladys stayed in this room. Gladys married a man named Fairman Rogers Dick. They would like to ride to the, ride to the hounds and, and hunt foxes at the Meadowbrook Club. Unfortunately, in 1926, when they were at the club, they were warned by a groundskeeper not to take a certain jump because it had just rained. Gladys, I guess feeling a little bit brave, decided to take the jump. Unfortunately, the horse flipped and killed her instantly. That concludes our tour of the second floor. In a few minutes, we're gonna take a look at the grounds, but let's go back downstairs to the ladies' parlor first and listen to some more music from Yo Cheng Ma and Eleanor Zayas. George Friedrich Handel. We will be playing Allegro con Brio. Welcome to the Autobahn on the property of the Roosevelt's. Uh, the house, the Autobahn was built in 1903 and added on in 1905. And uh, it has lots of beautiful uh, features in there. John Ellis Roosevelt loved cars. There's some early pictures of his daughters driving. That wasn't usually accepted at that period of time. They didn't own this Maxwell but his daughter is pictured on the wall here driving a Maxwell, a 1903 Maxwell. The Maxwell is a four cylinder. It is a dual six and 12 volt system to power it. It's a touring car. All the doors open where our Model T is usually the driver's side and uh, the passenger side doesn't open. It has no uh, windshield wipers. Uh, you'd have to reach over and just wipe it or there would be a little windshield wipe, hand windshield wiper on the outside that you'd have to push back and forth to do it. It does have automatic start so you don't have to crank it, break your arm. A lot of times the electricity system didn't work. Get out there and crank.
Well, in the back, there is a workshop. They had to have their own workshop at that period of time because there's not that many gas stations. So if something broke, you'd have to mend it, weld, spot weld it, you know, forge it. There's all his tools back there. So you had to do, you had to be a jack of all trades. You just couldn't, you know, get in a car and drive it. And if it broke down, just call the, you know, AAA up. In the early days of automobiling, there was no paved roads, and most of the roads were dirt or a little bit of cobblestone or gravel, and a lot of the early, early cars didn't even have windshields. So they would wear a duster. They would have their fancy clothes underneath there. They would wear goggles on the top because the dust would be so strong, and definitely a hat. They would go picnicking. They would have this metal part attached to this running boards. Foot warmers in the winter time, you'd fill it up with coal or a heavy stone that would be heated. They'd have to have oil on premises and it would be in glass bottles. So this building was built in three pieces. So this was the last section built onto the building. He was getting bigger cars, more cars. So he needed a forge and a work area where he could bring the engines in there. In the carriage shed, there was uh, originally the carriage was stored there and the horses were in there. After the horses and that just started to disappear, Mr. Roosevelt started to move more cars into the uh, carriage barn. Uh, having this car fills a niche here. It, it brings in a whole new perspective of the house. Well, thanks for joining me here for a very brief tour of Meadowcroft. We hope you'll come back for a full tour and learn a lot more about the Roosevelt family who lived here. We're open every weekend during the summer from 2 to 4. Won't you come down and join us? <laughs>